Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Amira Balkis binti Muhammad Izani, metric number 1816264. We know from our history that because of its geographical location, the Malay Peninsula has served as a kind of bridge between the mainland and the archipelago of Southeast Asia, which has shaped Malaysia's multi-ethnic culture greatly. So because of that, Malaysian architecture up until today is a synthesis or a jumble of architectural languages in which many are influenced by Western ideas, ranging from neoclassical to the international style and postmodernism. These architectures also have combination of other styles from other cultures such as Indian and Chinese due to the local Malay traditions. But if we were to talk about the various architectures that there is in Malaysia spanning across history, that might take a few days. So for my video, in this video, for my part, we are only going to talk about mosque. How did the first mosque ever built in Malaya? This goes way back to how Islam first came to Malaya or Malaysia. Historical evidence has proven that Islam first came to the Malay Peninsula in the early 14th century when an inscribed stone was found in 1887. However, other than the inscribed stone, there are no other evidences or historical records about architectural styles and building materials used in mosques during that period of time was discovered. Mosques were starting to be built only when the growth of Islam in the Malay Peninsula has become more prominent, which is in the early 15th century during the Sultanate of Malacca, the Malay Sultanate of Malacca. Also, Muslim merchants from the Middle East, the Indian subcontinent and Indonesia has settled in Malaya and causes the creation of mosque and Quranic schools called madrasah in their community. Example is the Muslim Achinis community in Penang. There are seven styles of mosque architectural languages that can be classified. The first type of mosque is the vernacular mosque. In architecture, vernacular is a design based on local needs, availability of construction materials, and reflecting the local traditions. Originally, vernacular architectures rely on the design skills and the local traditions of the local builders rather than the formerly schooled architects. So the vernacular mosque in Malaysia reflects the things that are native to Malaysia, which are the weather, the climate, uh, and the locally founded building materials, existing craftsmanship, as well as the subcultural background. This type of mosque is dated from the 18th century to present and would usually refer to old Malay dwellings that were responsive to the tropical weather. This is shown through pitched roofs that allowed rainwater to drain off smoothly, stilts to elevate the mosque above ground level in case of floods. In fact, all of the vernacular mosques are raised to waist and shoulder height level. And multiple openings such as windows, fan lights and carving for allowing cross ventilation. Furthermore, building materials native to Malaysia such as timber, bamboo, stone, clay and thatched are extensively used as it is widely available. The architecture uses complex floral motifs. There are actually two different kinds of vernacular mosques. The first one is the traditional vernacular mosque. The second one is the regional vernacular mosque. The traditional vernacular mosque shows inspiration from the Malay traditional culture. Some parts of Indonesia actually built this kind of mosque too. Examples of the traditional vernacular mosque are the Kampung Laut Mosque in Nilampuri, Kelantan, Langga Mosque in Kota Baru, Kelantan, Paloh Mosque in Ipoh Perak, and the Kampung Raja Mosque in Seremban, Negeri Sembilan. Meanwhile, regional vernacular mosque has a mix of regional influence, such as the two or three tiered roof with decorative root ridges and clay tiles, square shaped buildings, and octagonal minarets. It is said that the three tier form of the roof might be influenced by the sacred form of the pagoda, the Hindu and Buddhist temple. This hypothesis has to do with the debate on how Islam came to this region. Also since that Buddhism and Hinduism flourished before Islam and by the fact that many building craftsmen are actually Chinese. 
and, and if they were Malay craftsmen, they might have inherited their skills from the Chinese. Examples of regional vernacular mosques are the Tengkara Mosque in Malacca, Kampung Keling Mosque also in Malacca, Old Mosque of Kampung Masjid Tinggi Bagan Serai Perak, and Tanjung Keling Mosque in Malacca. The second type of mosque is the Sino-Eclectic style mosque. Sino means Chinese influence. Eclectic means a combination of two or more influences in architectural languages. Since many of the mosques were built by Chinese craftsmen, that is the similarity of Chinese architecture. There are two types of mosques in this category. The first is the three-tiered pyramidal roof form, like the regional vernacular mosque I had mentioned, and the second is the double-tier pyramidal roof form. Both types are similar in a majority of their features. The differences between the two styles lie in the prominent curvature of the roof ridges, which is made of cement. The mosque of this style sits on the ground and are not raised like the vernacular ones. The, they all have slabs on grade, which are raised about half a meter high with stone stairways. The plan of the mosque consists of the enclosed prayer area and the serambi or veranda surrounding either three parts of the square plan or all around it. These mosques are all located in dense urban areas. Examples of the mosque are Kampong Hulu Mosque, the Tengkara Mosque and the Kampong Keling Mosque in Malacca. The building is surrounded by a masonry fence with sometimes um, a roofed gateway like Chinese temples since there is influence of Chinese religious architecture. The roof ridges and fascia boards are sometimes decorated with plant motifs and the roofs are crowned with a mustaka which is a bulbous pointed sculpture reminiscent of Buddhist headdress. Many of them are very much influenced by foreign architecture domes of onion which gives a large roof space to protect the indoor space from solar radiation. Classical pillars for stability, pointed arches to support more stress of the building, allowing for much taller buildings and therefore more interior space. Pilasters for decoration, keystones which is for support at the apex of masonry arch or apex of vault, turrets and pediments also for decoration, and lastly, plastered renderings on cornices to protect the wall face and for decoration. The building materials are of concrete and brickwork or masonry. The mosque is situated uh, in urban area. Example is the Sultan Abu Bakar Mosque in Johor Bahru. Colonial Mosque also has a combination of Moorish and classical style that resembles Islamic image. The Moorish architecture is just a variation of Islamic architecture. It is named after the Moors, the North African people who conquered the Iberian Peninsula. So they used to be Muslims and so the architecture are uh, influenced by Islamic architecture that developed in the Middle East. And mosques are the most common example of Moorish architecture such as the Grand Mosque of Cordoba in Spain. The fourth type of mosque is the European classical style. The European classic style refers to the high renaissance architecture that was derived from the Greco-Roman heritage. The key features of this style are the base plan which is divided into three parts and topped with a double column supporting semicircular arches or dividers with pilasters. This symbolizes organization. Another distinguishing feature is the symmetrical structure of the massing and space denoting stability. The Sultan Abu Bakar Mosque in Johor Bahru is furnished with four minarets and small dome structures on top. The main prayer space has a hipped rooftop. The classical European type is recognized through its intricate cornice details, shaping a running band around the building. The windows are also framed with plastered cornice work. The Pase Pelangi Mosque Johor Bahru uses a deep pyramidal roof form reminiscent of the traditional vernacular mosque of the past but without any partis partitioning levels. The minaret is overwhelming in extent and topped not by a dome but by a little pyramidal rooftop. 
The Sultan Ibrahim Mosque in Muar Johor uses a hipped gable roof which covers a large central portion of the prayer space. This part of the mosque extends above the remaining roofed area to form a cle clerestory windows which reflect the design of the basilican type churches of early Christianity in Rome. The fifth type of mosque is the Northern Indian style. This style imitates the Mughal architecture that once prospered in the Malay archipelago. Mughal architecture is a, is a design that flourished in the northern and central India in the mid 16th to the late 17th century. The North Indian style is easily distinguished from any others because it uses many large and small domes of onions, multitude of spires to make the building look more appealing and usually be used to increase the height of buildings and can also function as lightning rod, although it's not the main purpose, and small domed canopies which provide shelter from the rain or sun and as a decoration, more than one minaret, horseshoe or multi-foil arches over decorated columns. Masjid Ubudiyah in Perak, the Masjid Kapitan Keling in Penang, Masjid Jamit and Masjid India in Kuala Lumpur are prime examples of North Indian style. The second last classification of mosques in Malaysia is modern mosques. Modern mosques, on the other hand, is those built during the period after Malaysian independence from colonial rule, and that is from 1958 onwards. Many modern designs were shown in the architectural style of Malaysia, and this was in parallel with the technological and structural advancements of the times. It uses modern materials such as concrete, bricks, steel, and marble. Design-wise, Although modern mosque adheres to modern principles of architecture, it still retained many former designs of traditional mosque architecture in the sense that common features such as domes, tall minarets and high ceilings are prevalent. Other distinctive features are the infusion of the well-designed landscape such as water features, plants, uh, patterned pavements, uh, garden lighting and signage. There are two type of mosque in this style. The first one is the modernistic expressionism. There are two mosques in this category in Malaysia, the Masjid Negara and the Negeri Sembilan State Mosque. The Masjid Negara is the best example of the combination of a modernistic reinterpretation of traditional Malay architecture with a folded, folded plate dome with a metaphor of a royal umbrella, signifying the importance of the building as a national monument. The Masjid Negara has a lot of serambi and veranda space with light courts and air wells to provide ample daylighting and passive cooling to the building. It is by far the best example of, the, of an architecture with a true Malaysian identity. On the other hand, the Negeri Sembilan State Mosque uses a series of intersecting reinforced concrete conoid to refer to the horn-like gable roofs of the Minang, Minang traditional architecture. The reference to the Bumbung Gonjong is uniquely expressed in the structural play of the conoid. The other type of style within this category is the modernistic structuralism style. The Penang State Mosque has a concentric ring of curved reinforced concrete ribs. The tip of the rib is crowned with an awkward dome to give its Islamic signature. The Kota Samarahan Mosque in Sarawak also has an identical form. The Al Shahidin Mosque in Sikh has no solid wall. The Qiblat wall is a freestanding structure, while the whole floor is ribbed with a meter high railing. The, the structure of the mosque are like this because modernistic structuralism style means that these mosques speak no particular meaning other than a simple expression of basic shelter. The last type of mosque is the postmodern revivalism style. This kind of mosque contradicts to the principles of what were understood to be as the modern style. The term revivalism means the attempt of postmodernists to create an architecture of meaning for the general public rather than for the elite few. And the locations of these mosques are over the most astounding places such as in the middle of artificial lakes or isolated from the urban areas. There are two classifications of the postmodernist revivalism mosque. The 
first one is the foreign revivalism and the second one is the vernacular revivalism foreign revivalism aims to not have any reminders of the British colonialism such examples are the Masjid Putra, Masjid Shah Alam, Masjid Wilayah, the UTM Mosque in Johor, the Sarawak State Mosque and many others. The signatures of this architecture is the use of a diverse exhibit of Turkish and Iranian dome structures, Turkish and Egyptian minarets, Persian Iwan passages, luxurious uh, yards encompassed by the courtyard which is a space for natural ventilation and space for um, gathering and relaxation and an Arabian hypo style arranging creation and pointed or half circle arches washed in lavish traditional Islamic embellishment. On the other hand, the vernacular revivalism shows a humbler approach with its three layered pyramidal rooftop. The Malacca State Mosque speaks to the grandiose extreme while Jimmy Lim's Aspa Mosque for the towns of Pahang speaks to the more humbler adaptation. The Malacca State Mosque illustrates the use of arches and entryways with its neo-vernacular symbolism, while the Aspa Mosque provides a sensible version of contemporary timber buildings without the kind of any Arab or Indian influence. In conclusion, there are very architectural styles for mosque design in Malaysia. This shows that Islam allows the variety of architectural language because of its principal religious tenets that are beyond racism. The varied style is a testament to the adaptability of Islam to various cultures and belief system that does not contradict its one main focus which is worshipping one God.